Hey boxers, in these next few videos we are going to show you how to make a game like Voodoo. We're going to focus on the gameplay here and the game I chose is a game called Gate Rusher. In this game you have a main character who goes through little hoops along a path and if you do not make it into the hoop then your character is defeated. So let's go ahead, let's start off by just double clicking on our default template here and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay great. So I'm gonna go over here to my 3D world. You have a start node and a 3D world node here, just as your default, that's what you're gonna start off with. Let's go into our 3D world and let's start making our game. So for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start by making this cube. And this is gonna be my main character I've decided. I'm gonna make the cube a little bit smaller. So I'm going to change it from a scale of one to a scale of 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0.25 in the x, y, and z direction. Okay, so now we have a nice tiny cube and that's looking good. We also have this awesome platform here that the cube is going to run on and this will be our base and we're gonna use this to create the gate rusher platform. So let's go ahead and start off by making this scene a little bit bigger. So just in case you don't know, Right here, this square is the start of your scene, and then this pyramidal object right here is the end of your scene. So this signifies the end of your scene, and this signifies the start of your scene. So what I can do is I can increase the length of this scene by just dragging it out this way, and just moving it along this way. Perfect. Okay, awesome. So if I'm gonna do that, I also wanna increase the length of my platform or the ground. So I'm going to change the scale here. Uh, first, I'm gonna position it right here in the middle so that when I scale it out, it stretches on both ways, on both towards the start and towards the end of the scene. Okay, cool. That looks good. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the ground so that, I'm gonna double click on this ground right now and I'm gonna make it so that the ground has physics and I'm gonna make sure that the object type is set to static because as soon as you turn on physics, gravity is gonna take hold and then the ground is gonna go falling into nothingness. So it'll just keep dropping and dropping and dropping and right now if I have it as static, it's not gonna do that. It's gonna just stay exactly where it is. So let me go ahead and zoom in here. I'm gonna drop my cube down a little bit so it's a little bit closer to the ground. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it just like that. That's pretty good. I think that we're good there. I'm kind of moving it around so I can see the side. You can see uh, right here how much space is between the ground and the character. So I'm gonna move it down just a little bit. And then now let's go ahead and let's start adding a few more things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up this first scene and then I'm going to create duplications of that scene so that it adds a little bit of variety. So right now, uh, based off of the game Gate Rusher, we need to have a couple walls over here on the side. I'm gonna do it kind of like Gate Rusher, but a little bit more flat. So what I'll do is I'll go over here to my asset library. I'm gonna use a cube as my wall and I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. So I'm gonna grab my cube, I'm gonna drop it in and let's go ahead and start creating a wall. So I'll put the wall right about, uh, probably like negative 4.7 off to the side here. Yeah, and then I'm gonna scale it down just like this, make it a little thinner. And then I also wanna stretch this out. And let's go ahead and make sure that I stretch it out the length of the scene, because I want it to stretch out the whole way. So I'm gonna center it just right about here, click the scale button, the scale tool and I'm going to scale it out so it stretches out just like that okay perfect that looks good so what I'll do next is I will look downwards at the wall and I'm going to hit D on my keyboard and that creates a duplication of the wall and now I can just move this over here to the right but I if I put this one over here at negative 4.7 I want this one to be at 4.7 so that they're even so it's evenly spaced between the center here Okay, now the other thing I want to do is I want to make it so that when you run into this wall, it's going to defeat the character when the wall collides with the character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click cube over here and then I'm going to go over here on the right side and rename it wall. And then what I'll do is I will go ahead and I'll turn on physics for this as well. And I'm going to make it static 
so that they're not move it's not moving anywhere. And then let's go back to our 3D world. I'm going to go into my cube. And actually, right now, you can see that the cube is still in the objects menu. And what we need to do is we need to drag it up here to characters, and it's going to change it into an actor. Now, I'll go ahead and I'll name this main character. OK, perfect. And now let's go into this main character, and let's start adding a few things to kind of make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to double click into my main character. And first thing I want to do is I want to add some movement so that the character is moving towards the end of the walls or moving downwards. So I'm going to click on movement here. I'm going to drag in a move node. I'll go ahead and I'll pin the speed so that I can change this within my 3D world. And I'm going to change this to negative 17 for right now. That's just slow enough where I can show you things, but it's not, um, not too slow where it's going to drag on. So the other thing I want to do is I want to make it so that I can move the cube and move the main character left to right. So I'm going to bring in a touch move node. I'm going to hook that up as well. And I'll click on this touch move. And what I wanted to do is I only want it to move in the X axis, along the X axis. So it's only going to move side to side. And when you try to move it uh, with a speed of one, it's really responsive. It's really good. So I think I'm going to just kind of slow it down a little bit. And I'm going to change the touch move speed here. I'm going to change it to 0.2. And I don't actually need to pin this one. So I'll go ahead and I'll just leave it out like that. Now let's make it so that when you collide with the wall, it defeats the character. Let's go ahead and let's just, just do that for right now. Oops, I accidentally dragged in a touch move. And um, I'll drag in a if collide. OK, so if the character collides with a wall, we'll have that right there. If it collides with the wall, uh, then we want it to be defeated, the character to be defeated. And so let's go ahead and we'll hook it up so the character is defeated. And then what I also want to do is I want to add in an animation. So I'll go over here to the top and I'll add in an animation that plays when the character is defeated. So we've got this animation here. And I'm going to go over here to an animation folder that I've got. I have some a little teleport animation here that is going to work well for the defeated animation. I'll select all my PNG files and I'll simply just drag them over here and drop them into this box. Perfect. OK, and I'll exit out of this right now. The other thing I'm going to do is I, I think this teleport animation is a little small. So I'm going to scale it uh, from 1 to 3 and 1 to 3 here in the x and the y. Perfect. OK. Cool, and I do not want to loop the animation, because if you loop the animation, it just keeps repeating, repeating over and over. And I just want it to play once. So I'm going to toggle off the loop. I'm going to exit out of here. The other thing I'm going to do right now at this point, since I've done a little bit of work and I invested some time to this, I'm going to hit Command S or Control S on my keyboard, depending on whether or not you're using a Mac or a PC. And I'm going to save my game. So I'm going to call this Gate Rusher Game. Uh, just so that it kind of is similar. So I'm going to go ahead and save that to my documents. The other thing I want to make sure, though, so I've got physics turned on here. I need to make sure that I have physics turned on. And then I want to change the object type here to kinematic. OK, so what this allows me to do is it still has physics properties. However, it also allows me to move around the object. So let's go ahead and I'll preview that right now. OK, awesome. It's working just like it should. So now I need to click into my 3D world. And let's go ahead and actually, I'm going to slow down the speed on this character. So I, I pinned the speed on the Move tab or on the Move node before. And so I'm going to select my main character over here. And then I'm going to change this now to negative 10 because it's moving a little bit fast for my liking. Now, the other thing I want to do is you'll notice that when you're hitting the preview, the camera is not moving along with the character. The character is moving off in, into nothingness, and it's not following the character. So let's go ahead and select our camera. And then we can select the camera either here or within our scene. And the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably lift, lift up the camera just a little bit, because I want to change the angle a little bit. I'm going to change uh, the rotation tool here. I'm going to turn it downwards a little bit. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the position follow to the character. And I want to show you something really, really important here. 
So let's go ahead and preview this. Okay, cool. That's a pretty decent angle. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now, let me go ahead and extend out this scene a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna click my start scene down here and I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard and that's going to duplicate the whole scene, okay? And but keep in mind, it also duplicates the character as well. It duplicates everything in the scene for you. So I'm going to delete the character from the second scene so it doesn't get a little weird there. Now let's go ahead and let's see what we're working with. Okay, so we've got a orange character who's moving th down these walls here and I can move them side to side. Now I wanna also show you a trail effect so that you can kind of see what the movement is like on this right here. So I'm gonna exit out of preview and I'm gonna go over here to my main character. I'm gonna double click on it and I'm going to add a trail effect down here. I'm gonna hook up the trail effect, and then I'm going to grab a PNG, a rocket trail PNG, and I'm gonna just drop it in right there. And so now we're going to have a character that has a little trail next to it. Okay, but do you see that as we are moving left and right, the camera is also moving left and right? Okay, that's not what we want. That's a kind of a real shaky feel to it, and the, con the camera's constantly having to reset itself. And it's not what we want, it's not necessary either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my 3D world, I'm gonna select my camera, and you see where it says follow force right here? This is where we wanna change this to zero, okay? This is, we're gonna change it so that the follow force is zero in the X direction so that it does not follow the character left and right. Now let's see what we've got, okay. We've got a character moving down the walls and we've got this sweet slide left and right effect and we got a trail and it's looking smooth and it's not looking choppy at all because the follow force is set correctly. Okay, so that's it for this video. We've got a good foundation here. Be sure to check out the next video and we are going to continue building out this game.